we hear these things called coping skills so often. You know, what are your coping skills? Use your coping skills. But you may be thinking to yourself, well, what are these coping skills and how do I use them? But first, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie. I'm Long Island's eating disorder specialist. I post on this channel three times a week. I talk about eating disorders, body image issues, general mental health, and if any of that interests you, please click the subscribe button down below. I also have an Instagram and a weekly blog for which links I will leave in the description below. All right, so coping skills. We like to think of them as awesome tools that can really help us feel better, help relieve things that aren't really things that we want to be feeling. However, let's just talk about these for a second. Coping skills in and of themselves are not necessarily positive. We have this positive connotation to it and that's wonderful, but we don't really think about the negative side of coping skills. There are coping skills that are really not helpful and are actually maladaptive. These coping skills usually are the ways that we're trying to find relief or trying to feel better from something that we're avoiding and these maladaptive coping skills may be included, uh, may include disordered eating, it may include alcohol use, it may be drug use and maybe reckless behaviors all of these are negative maladaptive unhealthy coping skills so that's just something i want to put, point out there for a second but when i'm talking in this video i'm talking about the positive healthy and adaptive coping skills these are the skills that a therapist or anyone would want you to have to feel better they're actually pretty effective it's just really a matter of finding the right ones that work for you because it's not a one-size-fits-all type of deal some people really respond to certain coping skills while other people don't so journaling is a big one that I talk about and I think that so many people can benefit from journaling but some people are just like yeah no it doesn't work for me and that's totally cool we just gotta find the things that work for you Okay, so the thing is about coping skills is that it really is trial and error. So we need to kind of figure out how to find the ones that actually work for you. So finding the coping skills that work for you really is trial and error. And I'm going to walk you through a practice that I go over with my clients to try to find the right coping skills for them. So what you're going to do is take out a piece of paper or take out your journal if that's best, if you can, if you have one. And we're going to write these things down. So label number one. Number one, next to number one in the journal, you're going to write down coping skills for when I'm in a you know, semi-negative space. So this is going to be the times that maybe you're just like feeling like a little lethargic, a little sad, but nothing too crazy. So it's not going to be something that is going to, you know, tear you down so much. It's just kind of a semi-low mood. And when you're in this type of space, usually you have a little bit more energy than when you're in like a super dark, low mood. So these are going to be the coping skills that you are going to have a little bit more ability to access your healthy self or have a little bit more energy to do these coping skills. So these coping skills might include things such as like bike riding, it may include things such as journaling, uh, it may include things such as, you know, going and calling a friend. So it's going to be things that do require some energy and do require enough healthy self to push you to do those things. And what I would suggest doing is going online, there's endless resources, but going like on Pinterest and just typing in like coping skills or hobbies or whatever. And there's going to be endless list of different things that you can do and it'll help give you ideas so maybe even just want to highlight the things that you could think of so write down five things that perhaps you think that you might enjoy doing and that you might like doing um, and that could be helpful for you again trial and error so you don't have to kind of really be the the judge of it right now but just something that you think you could, would be willing to do and possibly could help the next one we're going to label number two on the page and that one we're going to write when we're in like a medium mood like you're kind of in a worse off place than you were in the low mood um, but you're not really super super low so you're going to have a little bit less energy more than likely so when you have that little bit of less energy you're not going to be able to probably go out and bike ride and that's kind of setting you up for a failure if you're going to put that down or you're going to attempt that in that type of mood so you want to find things that are a little bit less maybe active or less energy consuming 
and it's something that you could kind of just do to help bring you in a higher mood. Maybe you're going to journal. I know that I said that in the other one, but maybe you could journal. Maybe you might want a drawer. Maybe it's just taking a bath or taking a shower or perhaps just reading or flipping through a magazine, just sitting down and kind of just, you know, letting that happen. So it's going to be a little bit more passive sometimes. And you're not actively trying to do something to totally change it. It's going to be more something that you can just sit back, relax, and hope it kind of helps to make you feel a little bit better. If you notice, the how it goes is that when you're in a lower mood, you know that you have less energy. The, the worse mood you are in, usually the less energy you have, the less access to your healthy self that you have. So now when we're going to move on to number three, right at, next to number three, you're going to write when you're in a really bad place. place. Uh, when you're depressed or whatever that is usually for you and this is going to be when you're in a low mood when you are really lacking energy when your healthy self is just like tired and it's really not trying to work so these are going to be very very passive coping skills that you might want to do maybe that's watching a movie or maybe that's watching something like a comedy um, skit and maybe that's or, or like on YouTube or something like that or you know on Netflix or something maybe it's just taking a nap of course that's something to just be careful with because you don't want a nap to turn into you know just sleeping your days away or anything like that but this is going to be the things that are just when you're in a really low mood and that's what when you're able to look at these lists that I'm talking to you about that that's going to be helpful in kind of deciphering what's going to be helpful in terms of what you need more energy for what you need less energy for and like I said it's going to be really independent for you it's going to be very different for every single person so see what works and so you're going to put five things that you possibly could think of in each category maybe you, you want to copy this list and put it like everywhere wherever maybe you're going to put it somewhere that you tend to have more depressed thoughts or you know low moods maybe that's your bedroom maybe it's your kitchen whatever maybe it's in the car put this list everywhere so that you have easily easy access to looking at a coping skill that might be working and helpful for you and with these coping skills, the next time that you're in kind of one of these moods, it's really important to look at it, kind of identify where you are, if you're in that one category, two category, or three category, and try something off that list. And let's say, it's going to be trial and error, as I said, let's say you've tried something and it really was not helpful for you, then cross that out of the list and find something else. So always make sure that there's five things on that list and this is trial and error. Remember, it's not something that's a fail. If you didn't, if it didn't work for you, it's just finding the things that do. So really, once you get through this and once you work through this practice and really actively find the coping skills that work for you, what you're going to be left with is a list of things that actually truly work for you because it's worked and it didn't. It made the list. Um, so that's what really the whole thing is. Is about weeding out the things that don't work for you and testing out the things to find what does work for you and that's really how you build your coping list and your coping skills I hope that you found this video helpful if you did please give it a thumbs up leave a comment down below about what is your go-to coping skill if you'd like to subscribe to my channel please do so by clicking my face over here and I wish you a plethora of coping skills on your journey to finding your state of balance and I will see you in my next video.